Okay, this is just a little presentation on dad's journey in the past couple of months on answering the questions, what happened? So how was dad walking around the house one day and a couple days later, we were calling 911 and an ambulance brought him to the hospital and later that week we were just in discussions about possible hospice care. So in August 2020, two lung tumors were discovered in dad's right lung, one in the uh, three centimeter mass in the right upper lobe and then a five centimeter mass that was hugging, uh, kind of like squeezing uh, his right primary bronchus. So in September and October, it started actually the day after Labor Day, dad started six weeks of uh, daily radiation Monday through Friday and then weekly chemotherapy every Tuesday for three to four hours. Uh, the radiation would then radiate each of these tumors, and those radiations would try to help reduce and shrink the size of those tumors. So on Tuesday, October 13th, Dad had his last day of chemotherapy, and there he is that they gave him a bottle of uh, Martinelli's, and he rang the bell, as per tradition. On Wednesday, October 21st, Dad had his last day of radiation, and You're as per good, tradition, Dad. here he is ringing the bell. Here we go. Bell and he liked it so much he did it a second time just for good measure bam so i'm going to take a bit of a tangent here for a second and so here is the nasal cavity and the oral cavity and there's the tongue and there's the back of the throat or your pharynx and there's your esophagus where your food goes and in front of that is another pipe and that's your trachea uh, your windpipe where air goes and so Food that's in the esophagus is going to go down to the stomach and the intestines absorbed into your bloodstream and you get nutrients. The trachea connects to your bronchi, those airways, which go into your lungs and that's how you get gas exchange with your blood vessels. So when dad's throat was functioning normally, food would come in through the oral cavity down into the stomach and so food's going down the esophagus and yay, intestines get the food and the nutrients. Then the air would come in through the airway, through the trachea, and into the lungs, and that's where you get oxygen, and that's good. So, after the six weeks of radiation and chemotherapy, well, during the chemotherapy and radiation, something happened during the radiation. That is, as the radiation went through this upper lobe, it's right near the esophagus. So, the radiation irritated dad's esophagus, probably all the way down, but especially in his throat, quite a bit. So, the following transpired. Dad said to his doctors as the chemotherapy and the radiation were going on, hey, I'm really having a hard time swallowing and I can only now eat soup. So, what happened is that's dad's throat and somewhere through the radiation, it became that. It went from normal to infected. Normal to, I should say, inflamed. He also got a yeast infection because he had a hard time swallowing. Not as much food was going down yeast developed and he got a yeast infection. So I'm really having a hard time swallowing, dad says, and he's only eating soup. Second thing is he said to the doctors, I'm always out of breath, which wasn't a surprise because of the tumor. Because there's dad's lungs and then there is his airways and that's the tumor. Now watch, as air comes in, air has no problem getting into dad's left lung, but when air tries to go into the right lung, ugh, only very little air was getting into the right lung, so dad's only breathing with really one lung. That's why he's always out of breath. So on Thursday, October 29th, this becomes a significant day in this development. There's dad. During this day, one doc set of doctors said, you know what? You have to have esophagitis, which is the fancy way of saying you've got an inflamed uh, esophagus. So what we're going to do is we're going to prescribe dexamethasone, which is a very powerful steroidal anti-inflammatory drug to reduce the swelling in his throat to help dad swallow. Another set of doctors said, hey, you know what? We since this after the chemotherapy and radiation are all done and he's still having a hard time breathing, why don't we do try the surgery that can help open his airway to improve his breathing? And we'll schedule that for Wednesday, October uh, Wednesday, November fourth, at the IMC Hospital in Murray, Utah. So, what happens is Dad's diagnosed esophagitis because he has an inflamed esophagus, so they give him this dexamethasone. One of the challenges we find in these next couple of days is that there are some side effects to death of dexamethasone. The following side effects occur in more than 30% of patients taking it, irritability. And in 10%, less than 10% of patients that take it, mood swings. However, dad got both really bad. And it was poor dad just went through this personality change for Thursday, Friday, Saturday to Sunday. And so 
I remember talking to his doctors just a couple of days later and said, hey, we got to get him off this. So they taper, started tapering him off it. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that week, dad tried to eat food, but this is what happened. The food hit this area and only a little food entered the esophagus because it was so hard for him to swallow. So he's getting very little food in his intestines, which is not good because he's not getting nutrients. And then this also seemed to have happened. So food particles went down his airway, inhaled into his lungs, which is really bad because it results in pneumonia. So sometime in that weekend, that happened. And so Monday, November 2nd is when the crap hit the fan. Dad had little energy. He was lethargic. He was hungry. He was dehydrated. He was troubled breathing. He had a horrible cough. He was disoriented. And so during the day, we talked to the doctors and they said, hey, completely just drop the dexamethasone because how irritated he was. But his condition deteriorated so badly by mid-afternoon that we called 911 and an ambulance takes dad from his house to Timpanogos Hospital down the street. At the Timpanogos Hospital, he gets an IV that replenishes his fluids. He gets a blood test that shows that he has some type of systemic infection, which they first thought was a UTI, but then a chest x-ray later confirmed that dad had pneumonia in the bottom of both of his lungs. So they start dad on antibiotics. And dad spends the night, Monday night, in the Timpanogos Hospital. Tuesday, November 3rd, here's dad. He woke up in the morning. He was feeling much better because he was off dexamethasone and he had fluids in his system, which was good. But he's still no food because dad has surgery scheduled for Wednesday at IMC the next day. And so dad's transferred from the Timpanogos Hospital to the IMC Hospital by an ambulance, really driving very fast, even though there was no emergency. So the late afternoon on Tuesday, November 3rd, because of COVID, this hospital only allows two visitors and they must be the same two visitors, but they cannot be there at the same time. So Gord and Dave alternate shifts. So dad can always have someone there with him. Still no food for dad because he has surgery scheduled for tomorrow. Wednesday, November 4th, dad has surgery to laser open the tumor in his airway. They stick a, an endoscope down his trachea with a laser, and then that laser does this, shing, and opens up and just carves out the tumor that's in the airway. This is before surgery, that's after surgery. Before surgery, after surgery is what they do. And this is what it looks like in an endoscope that's looking right down on the top, through dad's trachea, right at the top of his right and left primary bronchus. That is the tumor occluding the airway. And this is after the laser rotor rooter surgery where they place a stent. It looks like chicken wire that helps. It's all against the wall of the airway to help to keep it open. And hooray, the surgery is a success. In fact, to this day, dad's breathing is getting better uh, with his oxygen saturations. Now, Thursday, November 5th, post-operation recovery. Dad is given the green light to eat, but his esophagitis prohibits swallowing much. So, day six, without food. Friday, November 6th, Dad can only eat one bite of yogurt, and I think he got one bite of soup. Basically, day seven, without food. Everyone becomes increasingly more concerned about Dad's health and recovery, so much so that Mike books a flight from Toronto and flies from Toronto to Salt Lake City in Utah, uh, for this coming Sunday. Saturday, November 7th, day eight, without food. Little energy to move. Dad is increasingly more lethargic. He cannot get out of bed without help. In fact, he can barely move without help. He's now in a starved state. They call it an extended fasting state, but basically in a starved state. He has an increasing weight loss, increasingly disoriented. The doctors and nurses start talking to Gord and I about hospice. I cry and think in front of every single person who came into the room that day, including the custodial staff. Um, that evening, we make phone calls to Audrey about dad's declining health, and we start extending, really trying to explain to the family how precarious dad's situation is. Saturday, November 7th, was not a good day. Now, dad's condition was looking bleak, but there was one more ace up the medicine sleeve. And that was to try an NJ tube. Now, what is an NJ tube? An NJ tube stands for nasojejunal tube, where they put a tube in the nose, down the throat, down the esophagus, through the stomach, and into the jejunum, much like this. And the nasojejunal tube is called that because N is where it starts, and the jejunum, the second part of the small intestines, is where it ends. Basically, it's just a tube. Food goes in one end and out the other. And so on Sunday, November 8th in the morning, dad has an NJ tube placed. 
However, as dad was in a prolonged fasting state, the doctors worried about something called refeeding syndrome, where people who are in a starve, an extended fasting or a starved state, you cannot just introduce food because their electrolytes are out of balance. It can be very bad for their health, even to the point of death. So all day, they are giving infusions. In fact, all day Saturday and all day Sunday, they're giving infusions of electrolytes to prepare his body for food. So the NJ tube was placed Sunday morning, but no food was yet administered. Also Sunday morning, Mike flies very early from Salt Lake City, uh, from Toronto to Salt Lake City. But because of COVID restrictions in the hospital, he can't see dad yet. So he stays at Gordon Rachel's house. And here's a picture later on that Sunday morning of Mike um, with Karen and Kelsey and Josh and I and Joe was there and all Rachel's family um, welcoming Mike. Sunday, November 8th, also a really cool thing happened. We get permission for Audrey to visit dad in the IMC hospital for 30 minutes. And there's these wonderful uh, tender pictures of dad and Audrey as uh, Audrey got a chance to sit with dad. And an interesting thing, cool thing happened is there is this text string that we have amongst all the Vodies and the Mortons. And in that, Gord sent the following text. I came upstairs and found a group of nurses huddled outside of dad's open door. Audrey was inside reading dad poetry and singing to him, and they were all overcome. Even nurses pause when they witness a touching moment. I know this surprises nobody, but Audrey instantly became the talk of the ninth floor. They gave her an extra 30 minutes. So after an hour, Audrey leaves. Dad's tuckered out. Gord sends his text. Dad's currently fast asleep. The staff explained that they wanted Dad fully exhausted before they started introducing actual food into his tube, his NJ tube, and they succeeded. They did not dare interrupt Audrey's visit, though. All day, Dad had been excited and determined to be awake when Audrey came to visit. He told all the nurses she was coming. Dad's feeding tube is now fully operational and providing food and hydration directly into his small intestine. At this stage, they are bypassing his stomach because it's been several days since he's had anything sizable to eat. They don't want him to aspirate stomach contents into his lungs. So, on Sunday, November 8th, around 5 p.m., with the NJ tube in place, Dad starts getting nutrients into his belly. Monday, November 9th, little by little, dad starts getting his energy back. In fact, by the end of Monday, he's made significant progress. He's talking, he's more conscious of what's going around. He's able to swing his legs over the side of the bed without help. On Tuesday, November 10th, dad is getting his energy back and can now shuffle using a walker. He made such improvements that the doctors give the okay to recover at home. Here's a picture of dad in the wheelchair wrapped in a hospital blanket as they get ready to wheel him downstairs to get into the, um, uh, it's kind of like an ambulance like vehicle to transport dad. So in a nutshell, what happened is our focus was on the cancer trying to help stop its growth and its spread. And, and it was important to know because they gave dad till about American Thanksgiving if he had no radiation or chemotherapy. And so the treatment was always on the treating the cancer, but the treatment, the radiation caused esophagitis, which then resulted in these, all this chain of events of badness. So, but with the help and care of doctors, nurses, technicians, and a lot of prayers from family and friends, Tuesday, November 10th, around 6.30, dad's transferred from the IMC hospital to home sweet home, where he's reunited, and finally gets a chance to see Mike and Joe, which he's not had a chance to see and to be in his home again. Now, here's how dad's routine now is that he's at home. He asked first, originally he kept asking, hey, what's this thing in my nose right here? And we're like, oh, dad, that's the NJ tube. So basically beside dad's bed, he's got this little tower that's got one bag with water and one bag with liquid food. So the water and the liquid are then connected to the NJ tube and the water and food are injected into the NJ tube, which that tube goes containing the water and food bypasses this inflammation in his throat and empty its context directly into the jejunum, his small, absor- uh, small intestine, for absorption. Dad now can get nutrients continually throughout the day while his throat is still healing. Also, we're able to inject medicine like this thing we've all affectionately called FOSNAC, which are the electrolytes, phosphate, sodium, potassium, and folic acid, which then these medicines can bypass and go directly into his jejunum for absorption. Now, how long does dad need this NJ tube in? Well, 
here's some soup. And basically just fluids is what dad can eat. Liquids consistency with something like nectar. And so soup is really good. And his favorite right now is Karen's bone broth. He just loves that. So we add a little thickener and he eat that. Also, Sister Thompson's soup down the road is also so helpful right now. And what happens then is that soup goes in his mouth, down his throat and esophagus directly into his stomach. And with the soup going directly into his stomach, he's able to swallow food with the tube still in place. And he has the NJ tube there until the amount he's able to consume in his mouth equals the amount of food and water he's getting through the NJ tube. Because the swallowing is so hard, he also has these swallowing exercises that dad needs to do to help strengthen his esophagus and his pharynx in swallowing. It's his least favorite uh, part of the week doing these swallowing exercises. He's also on a nebulizer, which we also call the George Burns. And the nebulizer basically is this tube, and inside of it, it's got this uh, aerosol component called sodium chloride that he inhales. It goes all the way into his lungs. And so what this nebulizer does is, and you see this airway in these hunks of thick mucus, is the sodium chloride, once it's inhaled, goes through this mucus and basically helps to liquefy and loosen the mucus so that the inhaled sodium chloride draws water out from the walls of his airways and it loosens up the mucus so it's easier for him to cough out. And that's why the, the nebulizer is so important. So twice a day, we use the nebulizer to break up the mucus because germs like to sit in mucus and coughing out the mucus of the germs reduces dad's risk of pneumonia. That's why we call it the George Burns. Now, nystatin is also something dad's taking, which is prevents, prevents, treats and prevents yeast infections in dad's throat. So here's the nystatin. What dad does is he swallows it, swishes it around his mouth, and then swallows it and it coats his throat. And it prevents yeast infection. So what happens then is if you have dad has yeast that's growing, it hits his nystatin, uh, it kills it. So nystatin treats and prevents yeast infections, which is why he takes this spaced throughout four times a day. Now, dad's getting a little better each day. Here's a picture. He and Audrey has just been doting on dad and caring and loving and sitting and singing to him continually and reading poetry and they read scriptures together and um, they're getting better. And also there's a breakfast of champions. We've also got meals together around the table. There's Mike. Mike's trip. He was here for close to two weeks uh, helping. He was, uh, his help was uh, indispensable. Uh, throughout this whole time. He got the the food and the water bags and the NJ tube down faster than any of us. We have meals with family, sitting around helping dad get up to the table and he's starting to eat more and more with the family. Here's our my family just on uh, the day after Thanksgiving having some turkey soup. There's Gord's family as they surround dad and Audrey on visits and love and support. We started doing walks just around the block before it got too chilly. And so just taking dad and walking around the blocks. And I like this picture because everyone looks mad. <laughs> That's why I just put it. I found it on the phone and I put it in there. Uh, so walks became something good that dad could look forward to getting outside and breathing in air. I love this picture of just dad. You can see he's getting better and better each day, a little bit. So dad stopped sleeping in this hospital bed here. That's where he was doing for the first couple of weeks after being out of the uh, week and a half after being in the hospital. But he preferred this chair, which is why Mike took over sleeping in this bed uh, when we were taking turns at night. Um, so fantastic. Sherry is so helpful. She was making meals and coming and supporting her mom, as was Lori Sue making meals and supporting her mom and my dad. There's Amy Lynn again on visits. She brought uh, dinner that night and helping. And I particularly like this picture because dad looks like he's taking over his role again as the godfather. Um, Roseanne and Rosie bringing food and always being there. Sadie. Uh, with her baking and uh, that she came over every other day. Her apple crisp was a particular favorite in the chocolate chip cookies. Um, also Cassie coming and helping do chores around the house, as with Jamie also helping with chores and to help out uh, her grandmother. Um, we just, it was a really good time the past few weeks of getting family together to help. And there's Celine with Audrey and dad as Celine came and helped give a haircut to both of them. Um, so now what is next? Well, Basically, twice a week, dad has occupational therapy, helping to brush teeth, uh, help, 
helping him to then become proficient in doing the things that he wanted to before all this crap at the fan, like brush his teeth, shower, go to the restroom, all the things he can do in his regular activity, physical therapy, helping him get up and down the stairs, as you can see in this picture, and dad's getting better and better and more strength to be able to get around on his own, his speech therapy, helping him to swallow um, better. Uh, all three of these are challenging, but they're helping dad get back to what he was before uh, this incident happened at the end of October. Now, what's next? So dad still has trouble swallowing, but he's getting better each day. Uh, it's a little bit easier to swallow soup, so just little by little, he gets better at it. Remember that chemo and radiation? Well, the therapy, those chemo and radiation's effects still continue for, the, for a few months um, as they help to shrink and uh, hit this tumor and prevent it from spreading. So at the end of January, dad has a PET scan scheduled to go in to be able to see how those tumors are doing. So his treatment basically considered of medicine. All the things that we've talked about, dad's great strong background in herbs and his strong faith in God. So what can everyone else help continually do? Keep praying for dad, keep praying for the doctors, keep praying for Audrey and all the family as dad continue goes through this. So in the words of dad, onward and upward and steady as she goes and probably another Stephen R. Covey quote and probably another Neil A. Maxwell quote and this is on the wall in the kitchen every day in every way I'm getting better and better and better. We love you dad and Audrey and keep praying for your uh, recovery. <laughs>